Sterling Glehem. That's German for hello everybody and <laughs> welcome to Paul of Cthulhu and we're playing the sequel to Shadow of the Comet, Prisoner of Ice. As we can already see, huge improvements. I yes. mean, they're actually graphics. This is the first generation of 3D, Paul. It was not a very kind transition. Oh my god, this... I think we saw similar graphics in Theme Hospital cutscenes. Yes, actually it would be around the same time, spot on. And perhaps one of the original worms. No, yeah. no, one of the original no, worms. No, 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 you're, you're, you're all quite right, it's all around the same time. But... Oh, memories. <laughs> but speaking of time, Paul, you may notice that this game is set in the... just before World War II. Oh when my. You... Yes. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> At least one boot survived to tell the tale. So okay. here we go. That goes to show. Always make sure your calamari is dead before <laughs> packaging. Yes, that is the most dangerous. The, the tentacles can be alive for who knows how long. <laughs> you have to have some sort of like cool down period. Oh yeah. And with all that ice, their, their lifespans are going to get extended enormously. Absolutely. What what you want? Don't want to do is your paya to turn somehow you know sinister in that regard. Hmm. So anyway. As you can see, this is um, a Call of Cthulhu game called Prisoner of Ice. You see, they were very clever by putting Prisoners of in their credits for everything. Yes. Uh, this is, of course, ma this is made by the same people that did Shadow of the Comet, but it is a very different game to Shadow of the Comet. It's still a point-and-click interface, so don't get too mad, mm -hmm. but it's a lot more action-oriented. Um, it's not quite as open-world as, um, as Shadow of the Comet was, and it is a very different uh, beast to, to what we've played. So, you might like it, you might not. Um, so, we'll, we'll see how you feel about it. Okay, because the last one had a... I'm going to say a sort of loose focus, so there's a lot of meandering around. A lot of meandering, yeah. So, yeah. I... This is and the, to, to point that was nearly detrimental at points, so yeah. a tighter focus might be a good call. You know what, you, you, I, I can see your point, and I can say for certain that this is a lot more direct, shall we say, in its, in its design and overall how it plays. But uh, we'll see if they pull it off. And again, I just want to say outright, this is a Call of Cthulhu game. I just wanted to... Always good to know that the ancients were able to write Prisoner of Ice in English. <laughs> Modern English. That they, they prepared us for the fact that they will eventually make a game about this. Because that's another you know, Elder Beings. They, they, they saw this coming. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't think this is directly based off any work of Lovecraft. I think this is a bit of a mix match, really. Um, well, there is a, there's a story involving Russian submarines finding things they really shouldn't find. Yeah. Sorry, not Russian, uh, uh, German submarines. What am I saying? <laughs> Russian submarines didn't need, uh, didn't need that. They had ice. Maybe they were prisoners of it. Haha! <laughs> mm, it was the icy devs, but I don't think yeah. it was ice. But it, they, you don't typically find ice that deep. Yeah. But anyway. So this is not, it's not like a direct um, play on, like, Shadow or over Innsmouth as uh, the previous game was. This is a very much like a mix of uh, of stuff of, mm. of, of work. So we'll see um, how it goes. I don't know why they played that animation twice. It just kind of made it redundant. Mm. And uh, and there we go. Oh, so okay. so now we're able to start. Um, so Paul, if you want to do the honors. Okay. Um, well, I guess we're going to do a new game. Or, yeah, if you're happy enough to start, uh, it makes sense. So let's see what we, let's see how we go. So um, warning: <laughs> Are you sure you want to play? Are you ready for the Lovecraftian horrors that li lie within this crate? Well, I think I've got no real choice. You have a gun to me. I, January. It's not a gun. Off the so if you you just have to click to progress the comp the uh, dialogue. Okay, okay. Yeah, stay on pace. Submarine, HMS Victoria has picked up two mysterious crates, as well as a young Norwegian explorer, Jorn Hansen. Okay, already the audio is much better. Yep, yeah, it's vast improvement. Unfortunately, the commando unit carrying out the Polaris operation was unable to save Jorn's father, Peter. He will never be forgotten. He will always remain a prisoner of an ultra secret base. Ah, uh, is it in ice? Ooh, it could be. I fucking hope so. Or else this title doesn't make any sense. And observe, even more animation. My god. <laughs> Beautiful. You can really see the despair and the crushing depths. <laughs> you can't see it on uh, from our side, Wait, folks. Wait, is the top of that wooden? Probably. I didn't think they were good submarines. 
So we're on a British submarine, by the way, just want to point out, but our character is American. He's a liaison. Okay, and, um, oh dear, they haven't covered a map. Yep, that's, that's, that was Bjorn who we were talking about. Well, so again, nothing, there's nothing untowards about this so far. We have a madman in a Lovecraftian story. This is all about board so far. Well, a ship found some guy who was lost a bit after his dad just died mm. in the Ice Lewis lands. So, you yeah. know, it's you, plausible. You can have better days. You can have mm. better days. Lieutenant O'Leary, reported missing, returning to base. So I think that chappy there in the intro with the moustache and um, monocle, I believe, was Lieutenant O'Leary. Presumably from the 1800s. Affirmative. Do not expose them to heat under any circumstances. You know, for 1930s, that radio was loud and clear. Keep an eye on Hanson. He knows more. Do you read me? Loud and clear. Loud. Exceptionally clear. Loud and clear. Perfectly clear. We wouldn't get a signal on Skype nowadays. Mm. What technology did the SAS have back then? Lieutenant Ryan, given Lieutenant O'Leary's demise, you are now second in command aboard the Victoria. Hey, promotion by default. Ah, the good old yeah. murder your boss. <laughs> we didn't murder the boss. The, sure we didn't. Uh, the, the mysterious crate didn't did did that. Yes. Yeah. We saw it in the intro, Paul, and I don't think our character was in the crate to start the off with. The mysterious crate that, no, that no one must investigate. Yes, and nobody will touch. Nobody will talk about. No no, no one can know the truth. <laughs> the, cr the crate that cannot be named. Okay, I think we're, I think yeah. we're doing something now. Yep, can so you can go around? move around with the directional buttons, I understand. Actually, no, just click. Uh, yeah, the mouse is moving the mouse. The, the directional buttons are moving the mouse. Oh yeah, Shadow Comet had that as well. Huh. So you can just... It's just mouse only then, it seems. Okay, well that that is a lot of touch. Uh, yeah. Let's see, we have the captain. We have Captain Lloyd. Death doesn't exist. <laughs> the wait, 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 does does it? There's the a drawer. The drawer yeah. exists. Okay. Yeah. There's a ladder that exists. The periscope. These are the things that exist. I am yep, not the Paul. victorious pilot. I can't operate the periscope. I'm only. I'm only second in command, after all. Okay, and, uh, we have. Um, I believe that's the helmsman, Driscoll. The flooding chamber. Yeah. That's. I already can tell that's going to be to kill somebody. Well, it's a flooding chamber. What do you, what, what would you expect? Although I haven't been on the submarine, I'm sure it has an actual use. All right, if we get the pilot's mission to use the periscope. Talk to the captain. I'm the pilot. And I'm also Irish, apparently. Well then. Hmm. Now the funny thing is, you see, I saw a Let's Play of this a long time ago, and the voice actors, all of these were essentially. Essentially British. Dialogue options! Yes. My, my. You have a choice, Paul. Mm. Do you think Hanson will pull through? This is our main character talking, by the way. We shall do our utmost to ensure that the scientific community does not lose its most brilliant anthropologist. Mm-hmm. Makes sense, Frank. Hanson's got nerve. I wonder how on earth he managed to send us an SOS while in the hands of the Nazis. Perhaps he escaped? Without them, Chap. Operation Polaris would never have gone off the ground. <laughs> you can tell he's British because he says Chap. Striping old fellow. Uh, are they actually talking to each other? It's, I'm sure it's implied they're talking to each other. But they, they just kind of spouted things there that didn't really seem to have any connection. Paul, it's the 40s. I mean, people didn't talk normally like that. Fair point, fair point. <laughs> they they talked with their hands, as you can see. I think that, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, something is happening. So as you can see, it's very much not like Shadow of the Comet. We're, we're starting in media res here. Yep, sneaky Germans. Trying to take over the Antarctic. Yes, they must attack England via the North Pole. <laughs> we shall get a flock of penguins to attack them. What's a collective noun of penguins? Um, a mob of penguins. Not a flock? A mob. Oh. Okay. Nothing okay, back can happen here. well, there's a... Uh... Yeah. Oh, okay. Once you see the hourglass thing, it's because yeah, yeah, it's loading up yeah. something, so... 
Oh no, explosive barrels. Mm hmm. Looks like. Hmm. I'm, I'm still amazed I can tell. <laughs> well. Okie dokie. We can do that. Uh, yep. Oh no, not Jones! He's my favorite character. <laughs> He's so. He looks like the guy from Red Dwarf. You're not a doctor, you can't pronounce him dead. <laughs> I think it's fair to say, Paul. He was just talking. <laughs> Come on, the fire extinguisher's right there. Exactly. So. Uh oh. Oh no, it's green! The calamari is attacking. And there goes the captain! <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he keeps using the Keller Mary to kill off his superiors. You better get, you better get cracking. Get that fire sorted out. Look, see the door is smashing. Now you go up the top of the screen. Uh, you shall see your items. There you go. So put out the fire, you man. Right. Nothing on him. Ah, uh, uh, there. There he is. Well, and that's our first death sequence of the game. Um, how did you, uh... To be fair, <laughs> to be fair, I you let deserve, the monster out. You deserve that. <coughs> you deserve that one. I, I let the monster out and I died. Yeah, yeah. That is, um... So let's not do that next time. I oh. think we can, I think we can safely learn from our mistakes here in this instance. Alright, let's, let's try and load and see what happens. Yep, yeah, it's, um... It automatically loads, so it has a, it has an autosave feature, which is very ahead of okay. time. That so, is that is majestic. Hmm. Right. So what do you do now? Um. I don't think there's anything else you can do. Anything? Any, there's a transformer. Too heavy. Very well. To the bridge. Let's just leave. Let's just leave it there. Nothing bad can happen. Well. Crystal, Lloyd and Jones are dead. There's something alive in the crates. I'm assuming command of the Victoria. Yes, like, sir. And I sound like Kurt Russell. Aye, aye, Admiral. We'll get out of it. What are your orders? All right, Pirate Driscoll, calm down. Jeez, Admiral? Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, they used to address themselves like that. Well, that's a clean promotion I've ever heard of one. Hey, we'll take whatever promotions we can get. Tame this beast with stairs and ladder. Sorry, but the chair and the whip. That's it. A ladder. <laughs> <laughs> we'll beat them through board games. I'm sorry, what? <coughs> How did these two know that it's a creature in it? No, I'm sorry, the enemy missile disappeared. That thing was firing right on top of us. Yeah. And right. it's gone. Yes. Perhaps. Hmm. Are there any weapons on board the Victoria? Nay, hey, we are a peaceful military ship. <laughs> yeah, I suppose uh, it's a scale vessel, I'm sure. Who builds a submarine that doesn't have weapons? Well, weapons are very, like, unstable, Paul. If it's a really shitty submarine, it'll probably, like, you know, disintegrate if it tries to fire anything. And after all, it's could be just for, like, you know, exploring. Ah, uh, sure, you know, it's Scouting, only... Scouting, a scale uh, sure, you know, it's only impending wartime. Well, in fairness, in fairness to itself, Paul, yes, it would have been before war-ish, thereabouts, 1939, 1940, and it didn't know that there was, like, an evil box of paella that was going to, you know, I'm sorry. Break itself. Those dates you said. I know, I'm, I'm wrong on my dates, I'm sorry. That sounds like the most reliable information we can hope for. <laughs> Ah, that's grand. John Wayne, that'll be fine. Well, at least they're keeping an eye on the crazy guy. That's a start. Uh, didn't some? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So I think that's it then. So maybe this, maybe we can find notes on, 
on a cookie. Polaris. The drawer. Yes. Let's see. Is anything in the drawer? What? Wait, hang on. Now, actually, scroll up. Just like move up a little bit. No, apparently not. Um. Yeah. Okay. It's an interesting interface. Okay. <laughs> You're trying to go into the bottoms of the ocean, Paul. Um. Yep. The the, the flooding chamber. That's. Oh, it's it's the uh, it's the sleeping quarters. That's a. It's an interesting perspective. I know. It's a phrase to describe the place where you sleep. The flooding chamber. Well, maybe a lot of people have incontinence. Nice art. Hmm. Yes, Colin Mockery, tell us all. Why are why is every blonde person in this Irish? I'm going up to the bridge. Does he have glass eye? Hold on, we have to get Hems at the top. Hmm. Wait, Hems is still not fit to... Oh, yes, left. Alert me. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Wait. Let's talk to Bjorn. And... Wait, Hems is still not... Oh, yes. Okay, maybe we need to find something to talk to him about. I think you can just kind of exit out of here. May I click on Ryan? Or click to, click to some of the sides, actually, my... Hang on, maybe escape. No? Sorry. Ooh, maybe right click. <laughs> okay, we're just kind of stuck here. <coughs> okay. Ah, there we go. So you straight to the bottom of the screen. So let's see the end thing we can uh, interact with. The um, art style is really weird because the characters are modeled in like are obviously rendered, pre-rendered, and then everything is looks to be seemingly hand drawn. Torpedo launch tubes, of course they have weapons. They're launcher tubes, they're not armed. This will become relevant very soon. A hole! I didn't know glory holes were a thing in the navy, but oh, okay, actually, yeah, they were. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah, that makes sorry. No, 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 you realize, know. realize the moment they said it. <laughs> so, is there anything we can look for? That doesn't appear to be an actual door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's one of the fake doors you hear so much about. Is there something on the wall there? On the left wall, by the door. Oh, it's a hatchet. hatchet. Yes. So we have we have a hatchet now. Well, I guess time to go and I I, I don't know axe. Uh, I, I want to ask uh, axe you a question, Mr. Driscoll. Is there anything on the desk? The not this desk, but the one next to it. No. Okay. Uh, maybe consult the periscope. There, oh, we, there we go. Okay, we right click. Right click to look in. Okay. All right, let's have a look. Maybe right-click then. Aha! It's a wonder of modern technology. Okay, so now we have a code book to open to contact people on the radio. Ah, but but I have a code book. No, you use a code work code book on the radio. There you go. 